Let me see. Am, am I out? Let me just say that. Ooh, don't do that. Yes, I am up there. All right. So what I'm going to do is drop in the music uh, uh, loop that I created for when I'm drawing CB art. Let me see. Boy, that's loud. So I'm going to lower that a little bit. I'm going to try to go share this stream in video so folks can check it out. Um, it's going to be about an hour until the next raffle. So see who gets into Secret Agent, crossing my fingers and also crossing my fingers not to get in simultaneously. Because if I get in, I know I am going to do nothing but play CB for hours on end. <laughs> and if I do, <laughs> if I don't get in, I watch a lot of videos watching people play CB and be on the Discord server for hours on And Either way, it's a time sink, but at least I can do some work <laughs> while I don't have access. But yeah, I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to go into the Discord server and I'm going to drop the, the link in there. Uh, I usually put it in videos. Ooh, Captain Nemo and wow, your doomsday did one. Nice. I'm gonna check those videos out later um, when I'm done with the stream. And let me just edit that. That's so that they know what it is. Saya. This is Saya versus Knock. C B R. There you go. And what I'll just do too at the same time, I'll just go into there and show folks what's going on. Right, we're almost done with the side. I'm probably gonna do some more work on the. I'm gonna tighten up the the staff a little bit, and then from the staff, I'm going to go try to do um, the wings. The wings are the only thing that's left, and once I get those done, I'm pretty much gonna be done with the the side part of this drawing. I have to do this because it's a lot of crookedness going on here. No, I'm in the right one, right? What the? Whoa, I don't want to merge them. I don't want to merge them. I want to uncouple them. Hold on a second.
This stuff looks better. Let me see what else. I just want to add in some, a little bit of darkness to the edge of it. Because it looks a, it's a bit too dang bright. And I, I guess against the wing. Um, my idea for what I'm going to be doing with the wing, the wing is going to be very... The wing itself is going to be very, very bright. So I want this to be able to stand out against it. Because it's going to be a very pale color. I'm hoping I can finish Isaiah today. I might actually try to finish both pieces today and get the background in on here just to get this done. Because the other two I did in a, in a day. Like I would sit down a day or two working on them fully. And this one I've actually have been doing over a, a couple of a stretch of a few days. So. Let's see if I can get back to it. I'm gonna see if I can finish this today. I don't think I'm gonna do any more. This was just another one of those battles I saw in my head. Um, and the reason I chose these two, they're two of the easier ones to draw. Even if the time you see I'm putting into Isa Isia, she's not that bad. The other person I might do is, um, I might throw in a Sunder versus Knock. It's just, Horton, as beautiful a character as he is, and as great looking as a character as he is, he is so hard to get all that detail in. It's just, oh my god, it's so time consuming. <laughs> That's the only reason I don't want to do another Torden piece. It's, it's, it's a great looking character. I like it a lot. I just don't like the amount of work it takes to draw him, um, to paint him. It's a lot of little detail. A lot of things you're trying to figure out while you're putting the piece together, and man, whew. it took me eight hours um, to actually complete it. And you can actually see Torden at the side of my um, screen um, as I'm doing the screen itself. And that's a mistake. So, what I'm gonna just do is cut and paste. That has to be on the wing. The wing has its own layer because I don't want to have to spend time dodging when I'm trying to add shadows and do stuff like that. I don't want to have to spend time trying to figure out what layer that I'm on. So I purposely did the wings on their own layer. <laughs> What's up, man? do is we're gonna go airbrushing on this and what I want to try to do thanks a lot let me just see am I on an airbrush yes I am am I on the right layer yes I am so the whole idea is like I said as much as I would love to do another Jordan piece He's just really hard. <laughs> so that's the only reason um, I don't like messing around with him. He, it's just, it's beautiful, but oh my God. When I was working on him, I'm like, am I done yet? And every time I was like, oh man, I'm almost finished. I would find out I missed another piece of detail. And then I would have to go back and go work on it. I was just like, <laughs> so Torden's not the, Torden's not the, the dude I like drawing if I don't have to. But like I said, he's a, it's a beautiful looking character. Um, the art team and the art director, the designs are off the meter. Like, I mean, 
the only reason the stuff looks as good as it looks is because it's so well drawn. It's like, I just figured out, I'm at the point now when I do my art, I know how to duplicate something that I'm seeing really, really well. So that's why like it looks as good as it looks. So that's the thing I, I kind of enjoy a lot about it. Yeah, of course he joined the chat room. <laughs> that's a bit late. Holy moly. He wrote like three messages and then it said he joined the chat room. Switch is a bit slow. <laughs> it's like, kind of funny. Richie basically wrote like a bunch of messages and then Twitch just caught on that he's in the chat when he joined it. It's kind of weird. So the whole idea of what I want to do is nothing is going to actually... The, the outlines that you see here are my original lines that I put for the drawing. Um, they're just guides because it's not really what I'm going to be using for painting. Everything is being done via color. And the trick with what, what you're seeing here is I'm using the picture of Isaiah from the video as a reference, but it's an opposite reference. If you see the way she's facing and the way the light is hitting her, I'm actually mirroring the light. Like wherever you see light in my in that drawing. I'm actually going in the opposite direction. It's like it's not in the same place. Like the way she's facing is not facing the same way as I'm drawing. So when I want to add light to her, I want to add light onto this side. And whenever I want to add shadows, I want to add shadows onto that side. So I'm referencing the picture for how things would look on her in light areas and shadow areas. But I'm flipping the way the light is hitting in this picture because of the positioning of the character because like what's really cool about this picture is i wasn't planning on doing another one of these <laughs> and then i thought about then i just thought about like yo what if isaiah was using that power where she's like doing a a whirlwind and knock is flying through it and i was like yeah i'm gonna have to draw that like i i wasn't and then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to draw it. So it just got stuck in my head. And what happens is when certain ideas get in my head, like I'm like, I just have to produce them so I can move on with other things that I wanna do because they're they're there and I can see them and I wanna actually get them done. So that's what causes me to go into drawing catalyst black stuff. And it's also kinda cool, um, something you can actually do even though I'm not playing it it's some it's a nice way to participate and shed some light on it too As like I said the art team on on this it's ridiculous it's a it's so amazing the the character designs that they produce even even the chosen even the the people looked really they, they look really really good i like i like a lot of the design aesthetic for it, it it's it's like it gives you a feel of fortnite um mixed in with um some of the other games um like um come on man why is that not coming overwatch like the those art styles like seem all in there even though cat is black it's his own thing but you can see the 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 homage to a lot of that stuff that's why like when you look at the art style too you can see like um i can definitely see a good way for them to monetize this game is um skins and and like shoulder pads capes scarves whatever you can add to accessories that you can add on just to the human characters to make the human characters more personalized so instead of them just being the the eight skins that you're looking on they can wear hats, they can wear crowns, they can wear a bunch of different things. And that's definitely something you can monetize. And you make sets um, of, of uniforms for them. And you should make some of the sets that are female specific, some of the sets that are male specific, which is something I've seen in Fortnite. And I would think that's a great way to monetize it. 
one of the things I remember from Vainglory that I used to like a lot that they used to do is every time you bought ice, you would put like a gold a gold banner around your name, like so you, people know that you're supporting um, you're supporting the company because you bought premium currency. Um, and what I would do is, even though I didn't have a lot of income to drop into the game all the time, every time it was about to expire, because I believe it was like a 20 to 30 day thing, I would then buy more ice, whether sometimes it was a dollar, sometimes it was $4, I mean $5, so on and so forth. And I kind of like that. Um, like that's the thing I was even thinking about. If they even came up with a subscription model, where like if you paid five dollars a month and they had a battle pass also you'd get a discount on the battle pass if you were buying it but if you took a subscription like 7.99 or ten dollars a month you would get the battle pass all the time like you that would be included in the in the subscription fee so like i mean it's not like you have to subscribe to play but it would be a nice way that the company could have revenue coming in and they wouldn't have to worry about it. They, they'd see a stream of cash that was coming in all the time. And I'm sure people would definitely like that because if you were getting perks like battle passes or it would get you into testing or early access, stuff like that, that'd be freaking fantastic. Man. I mean, I wouldn't mind paying a monthly fee. Even if I, I don't automatically get into an early access, it'd be nice to be able to see like special chats or um, VIP chats or stuff like that for members who people who are paying who are helping support the company because even if you i i personally don't like loot boxes i personally i mean when i mean by loot boxes i don't like loot boxes that like for you to get something you have to gamble to get it i hate that <laughs> I, I can't stand it i prefer the idea of hey if that skin costs ten dollars i'll buy it for whatever mark many marks it costs I'll pay real money to go get that skin. I I personally prefer that. And I would have bought probably more skins in that way. Like I didn't mind grinding to get skins when it took a lot of cards to make them. And sometimes I would buy ice so I can get these special um, cards that were basically sitting there that I needed to, custom, to craft my skin that they had 40 um, lances in there or they had like 10 lances in there. I would that one I didn't mind because I at least I know in the box is something I want. <laughs> when it's totally random and it, it the chances are like you're spending more to, to try to get it. It it doesn't I don't like it. I, I didn't like it. It's the same reason I didn't like blueprints either. Um blueprints with were, were, were rough because blueprints were so randomized and so almost there was no way to get what you wanted. You're always playing and hoping for the best. And I, I didn't like that. That's the reason I think the crafting worked better because it's what we, what I first started using. And the idea of being able to get um, things that I wanted, I, I really didn't mind it. I really didn't mind not being able to get the skin outright and grinding towards building it. And there was also, like I said, when they gave you special chests where you know inside that chest has the components of the things that I want. Yeah, that that I can, I can deal with. Because the thing is, everybody was picking from the same pool. And what would happen is you would see it count down where there's only like four lances left or four um, epic lance skins left. That I, I, I liked a lot more. Because it feels like you you have some control and you know, oh, okay, if I spend my money, I have a greater chance of getting something where those 2% chances of getting the skin, <sighs> I lost more of those than I won. It was frustrating when they had created the scarf skin, <laughs> um, the, dra the, the, the dragon scarf skin, um, the rainbow scarf skin. And my daughter, I, I gave her some ice. She got it on the first... Oh, I was so mad <laughs> because I I only was able to get the the scarf skin from the from the battle pass, and it was never as pretty as the 
as the all white one that my daughter got from the loot box. I was, I, I'm telling you, I was mad. I was like, how the, because I would do these things over and over again, and never, I, I never got a skin from, from those boxes. And then when I started looking at the prices and the way, it's, I was wasting my ice, and I was like, I don't want to do this. So, either I, like. When there was like a, a contest and a Halloween thing and you can get, you can win ice or you can win stuff. I would like, okay, if I had, I have, I need to have a Celeste Cauldron Party skin to be able to complete that quest. There were times I spent ice to go get that, to go do the quest, to go get stuff. But I would not buy it on a loot box. <laughs> it, it was weird. It's, but I, I don't know. I prefer the option of being able to achieve it with some control versus um, zero control and a 2% chance. 2% chance sucks. Like, I mean, no, <laughs> like it, it, it feels like a random generator situation, sort of like trying to get picked for the, it's like trying to get picked for the, early access or the secret service program it feels something like that but the, the thing about the secret service program like i said if i'm supposed to get in i'm gonna get in <laughs> if i'm not supposed to get in it's not really that bad of a thing for me because i have a lot of work artwork i have to produce all the time and it, it wouldn't be conducive for me for getting work done because i had this my when when the battle pass came in um, on when Battle Pass came in for for Vainglory, I hated it at first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You should like the thing. Like I said, I hated those boxes. It's I loved I loved the, the ability to pick. It's even if it's random, but if it's a finite random set. And you know that as other people take from the boxes, it gets you closer to the stuff that you want. It, it, and I can keep account of, hey, there's there's some fortress skins in there that I want. That that was, I was willing to spend money on that. I don't understand why the mentality is. It's just that you know there's a greater chance of you getting what you want will make you spend money versus 2%. 2% is horrible. Like, to me, Secret Service ain't so bad because there's so many people like I'm on the server that I'm friends with or I'm friendly with and I'm watching them every day like, oh, man, I didn't get in. And they're so sad. When you watch them get in, you're happy for them. And the thing, too, is, you know, that some of them will come back and they'll keep talking. Like, there's a lot of dudes who won giveaways and there's a lot of people who got in through the Secret Service. And these folks are they come back and they talk all the time. So that's on the on the open chat so to me that's what i like about it and what i do is like i'm doing a lot of analysis of stuff that i see the reason i was i, I wanted h to chase to get a key so bad is while i was watching Masborn and him playing i was thinking of loadouts because he was explaining how the loadout works and he was trying so many different um patterns and buildings to many different things up i got an understanding of what I could do if I wanted to play. When I used to watch Vainglory Esports, my God, man, I would watch those builds that they were using in the games. I'm like, yo, that's cool. I would go try those in a bot match and then use them in real games. I, I was never, I'm never was into rank as much as everybody else, but I did love playing casual a lot. And I always loved trying the builds that I saw. Like I'm just, I was never a person who was really big into rank. I think rank is a cool system. I love watching people play professionally. I love supporting tournaments. I love seeing all of that stuff. Cause I, I'm telling you, Vainglory is the thing that got me into esports. Cause it wasn't even a thing for me. Like I, I watch people play League, leagues of legends and defense of the ancients. I think Dota, to me, is more entertaining than watching League. Like I just re-downloaded League and just tried it a day ago. I don't really want to play it. He, there's two problems. There's too many characters. <laughs> and when you're going through the tutorial and you're doing stuff and I'm pressing the keys, I'm knocking out the powers. There's so those two extra powers they give you in League feels like too much. 
because I'm not sure exactly what some of them do. And the problem I'm having with it too is I don't feel like I'm being effective while I'm playing. <laughs> so it feels like I'm just pressing a button and big things are happening. But then if you play against real people, you since you're not really sure what's going on with the characters, you're not 100% sure like how to use it. Like you'd have to play, I'd love to play a lot more bot matches with nobody building, going through the stuff like I would do in, um, in Vainglory. And sometimes when new characters came out, I would just go into practice, put the skin on, and play the character based on the stuff Ciderhelm, Ciderhelm had said in the video and try to reproduce some of those things so I can understand the timing in them. Like that's what made Vainglory so easy to play. Even though I never was able to get in those top tiers because no matter how many times I was in those games I needed to get to level 8, somehow I always was on the team with one or two guys that's just not playing to the tier level that they were at. <laughs> so it was frustrating. So I would always just keep, I'd be on the cusp of winning games and then you'd we'd throw them or they'd get tilted at the end and we just lose them. I'm like, oh my God. And then I just watch my, I just watch my freaking ELO or I would watch my, my rank just start dropping from, what do you call it? Seven tier gold back to silver, then back to bronze. I was like, damn it. And, I would just stop playing rank because I'm like, I don't want my tier to fall any further. So it was rough. That's that's the reason why, like, I, I commend all the folks who were able to get themselves into those upper tiers because, man, man, <laughs> and it's it's not easy. It's not easy. And the thing is, I was always trying to do it solo queue. I, I never really did it in party. I was always trying to do it through solo queue. And I would just have the damnedest luck, man, with my teams. They were always just, just off, just off. And then every once in a while, you get that toxic jerk who, oh, you suck, you suck, which makes you wind up having to turn off your chat because you just don't want to really deal with it. And even the best players, everybody at times will have one or two games where you play like trash. It happens. Or the person you're playing against, the person you're up against is a, a more skillful player. And they got you so far down that, yeah, man, you can't keep up. And you're and they're focusing you and they, the builds are are better and they just know what they're doing more than you do. So it'll happen that way. But like I said, Vainglorious is like it's fun. I remember when I had battle passes, I would spend at least every day i would try to move the battle pass up by one or two levels per day and i there i had my own guild that i had created called iqs which is basically but it was questions inc but i always flipped it to iqs when you saw us in there it was something i built with my kids um and the, the funny thing is they were like there were guys who were in there who i would be competing against just trying to keep my levels higher like when when it went to a 500 level gap i was the head of the guild so i always was trying to make sure i was ahead of everybody by at least like t five to ten levels <laughs> and there was this one guy he would always be like crawling up and sometimes i see he drop he'd be like like two or three levels away from me and i'd be like ah or sometimes he'd pass me and i would play to get back on top the funny thing is no one in the guild had more more what do you call it experience towards the guild than i did like i just played the most out of everybody there um and it was it was just a casual guild i i, I was never into um i was never into like making it competitive but my rule was if you were in the guild and you weren't active for over 100 days, I would just drop you because I'm like, what's the point of you being there? Like, if you're not playing, <laughs> why are you in the guild? Why are you, why are you even here? So that was like my only rule. I mean, there were people like, yo, this person has been active for 120 days. I'm like, damn, my bad. <laughs> I would drop people because if you're if you're not playing for almost three months, it means you're really not playing. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's that's how I ran my guild. My guild was pretty simple. I was never I was never a stickler about it. And every once in a while, I'd had matches 
a lot of the people that were in the guild were people that were like that I would eventually friend but it was never it was never something that was really messed up because I remember a guild I was in and I played the whole the whole year or the whole season with them and at the end of the season I thought they called themselves either Halcyon Knights or some weird something like that right at the end right before the season ended they they kicked me out of the 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 guild and I lost I got none of the rewards that I actually helped because like I said I used to play at least three or four hours a day when I could sometimes I wouldn't sleep weekend specifically I would definitely get that in but it, it was rough after Halcyon Angels <laughs> yeah I remember because after I actually fought after they kicked me out then I made my own guild. Anytime I saw somebody from that guild, if I was playing Blitz, if I was playing any match, oh my God, I just went out of my way to demolish them. Always and forever. Like it became it became a thing. Like I, if they was a Halcyon Angels person in there, I focused and killed them and made sure I won. It, it made me play so much better because I was so mad at that, that, that guild for the longest time. Because it, it's kind of messed up. I had my daughter had, had joined it also. And they had left her in, but they had dropped me. And I was just like, really? <laughs> and that's when I made my own guild after that. But yeah, those guys, man. And it's funny, too. They were such sticklers. And they were, oh, if you're not doing this or whatever. Oh, if you're going to play with us, somebody has to play carry. Or somebody has to play support. And at that time, I wasn't a really good support player. And because of them, too. I actually started learning to play support. Like, cause I told them, like, they go, we need, uh, we need this person. We need this character playing. I'm like, I really don't know how to play him like that. I can play him as a weapon, uh, but I don't really understand how to play him support. And that was before I literally started playing support. And like, now I understand how to play support. I can play in Vainglory any role. I can play support. I can play, um, captain. I can play jungler. Um, the the key is I prefer lane because if you have bad laners and they can't hold the lanes <laughs> it becomes really really rough really really fast so I, I have a tendency I don't trust people in the lane as much like if I play support and I'm trying to be the guy who's keeping everybody alive but our, 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 our main carry comes and he does not have good damage output. I can try my damnness to keep them alive or they're really bad at farming. I can try to keep them alive all I want, but if the other team can just blow you out the water in like two or three seconds, because you can't output damage, what's the point? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, what's the point of that? Like it's kind of useless. So that, that was the thing. So I, I tend, have the tendency to want to play carry or jungler myself because junglers are nice because they you can if you do a lot of counter jungling where you're you're stealing the farm of the other people, too, and you're getting that early um, treant before the shot comes into the into the jungle in 3v3. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you can you're a nightmare. Like, I mean, you, you get so strong. Oh yeah, I, I, I believe I started teaching her to play between the time when she was six and seven. <laughs> and then she really was playing heavily at, at eight. And the way it was, I was like a Ringo main. Like any game I played with Ringo, when I was smurfing for her when she first got on. So I was getting her characters and stuff. And she liked Kashka a lot. So what happens is for her to learn to play Kashka, I watched the Cytohelm video, learned how Kashka worked learned to play her taught her how to play it in bot matches and then she became this kashka main that like i mean in games i remember one game we played all assassins it was kash i was the guy we were playing with was taka i was a um, black feather and my daughter was kashka oh my god we, we rampaged <laughs> through that game it was ridiculous um, they, there was a Baron on that other team, and oh my goodness, man, we just dived on Baron every five seconds. Like I think the people went AFK because we shut them down so hard. It was it was one of a friend of mine. Like whenever we would play, he would come in, 
and I was a Black Feather main too for a while. Like the funny thing is, every character that came out in Vainglory, I learned to play them because I would always get the early access with them, and I'd learn to play them. I'd bot match my butt off until I understood how to get their their moves to work correctly. So I would at least spend a week or two on every character, and then if I liked the way the character played, I'd stay playing with them. They'd come into the the main fold and if i didn't like them i just left them like i figured out kenson near the end of the time that um super evil had control of um we're, we're still in charge of uh of vainglory because kenson oh my god like once you get how to play him jeez louise what a monster alpha i had gotten really early she was one of those people that i would play um but other junglers started coming out like another one that's a real fun one if you figure out ozo what a great character he seems weak he seems like it's ridiculous but if you figure him out ozo is a character that that can go either way you can play him weapon you can play him um crystal and you'll get just as rewarded in each side that's how good of a character he is like ozo like i love characters like that in comps when you're looking at them you're just like okay there's like two there's two guys already on weapon i'm going to go crystal ozo instead and you have that flexibility i love characters like that idris is another one like that i love that you can you can flex them you can change them whatever way you want based on the compositions that you see i have a tendency to build a uh, a divergent path idris i always have the ability to use both of his um specials like i i favor him more in crystal but i love getting a a sorrow blade to allow me to do the quick the quick dash and i can do some damage when i'm not using my uh when i'm not using my distance attack that you get when you're in crystal mode so yeah i always have him in divergent path i always have at least one weapon to push him into the weapon into the weapon um, mode but i always build him out as crystal like i build a lot of crystal first and you start with crystal bits and stuff just to get him into the into the crystal path as fast as you can because when you get that little range attack he's doing like 135 like just when you first get it you're, you're hitting people with almost like 135 crystal damage every time he hits him with one of those little stars so yeah he i always love him in crystal path a little bit more yeah there's like i'm telling you there's a vain glory was was crazy like i mean there's so much fun stuff i remember about it that's why i still play like i said uh just the other night i actually got a chance to play against Mon mongo and and um the enzio it was actually pretty neat um the reason you know that they were those characters they were really really good and they didn't play like they didn't play like um like noobs or people who don't know what they're doing like because it was kind of funny the crawl was not jungling <laughs> like in the beginning of the game i was playing taka he gave me an advantage because what he was doing is he was actually helping the nzo clear the top lane and they were catching our top laner. So our captain was on the top lane defending them. And I had to, while I was jungling, kept having to come into the middle lane to, de to defend our Vox. And the funny thing is, that Vox, I believe, AFK, but came back. But they weren't a very effective Vox. Like, I wanted to play Vox before we got in that game, but I actually waited two to three games to get in and for some bizarre reason it seemed like people didn't want to play jungle and i had just the day before practiced in a bot match um my taka taka jungling and i had like 27 kills in that bot match just because i was stealing both jungles or at least three of the four jungle spots so i was figuring out how to build taka super fast and because mango was not jungling in the beginning I was leveling up fast 
I was actually going through it pretty quick. And the thing is, just because I know characters and I know certain things about Vainglory, like um, the character with the greatest damage output in the whole game is Ringo. Um, if Ringo gets built out, he can produce more DPS than anybody. Damage per second, he's the highest. So while I was playing, I wasn't really concentrating on the names of the people. So whenever, every time I saw Ringo and I had a chance to get Ringo playing Taka, I would basically roll on him and X Rin 2 and take him out as fast as I could. Because if Ringo gets started, Ringo can basically end the whole team. Um, so I kept on doing that over and over again. My two main targets were Ringo and Crawl because I saw they were doing a lot of trouble, causing me a lot of trouble. So at one point, I did a weird thing in the build because of Crawl. I added a Poison Shiv into it <laughs> because it was one of the things that when I used to play Captain as Catherine, I would definitely throw in a lot of Poison Shiv into my builds because Crawl, if you can get him critically wounded while you're doing damage or you can stun him out of his, his pattern, you can literally shut down a crawl really fast. So once I added in the poison ship plus the X Rentu, like crawl became short work. You could just basically put him into critical wounds all the time. And if the player starts walking away with crawl and not coming into the battle, crawl's dead. He's useless. <laughs> like crawl does not play well walking away. Crawl has to be dive all in. Playing crawl in the walkway mode, there's not much you can, there's not much you can do. If he's not facing you, he's kind of dead. So yeah, when I didn't realize who I was playing until the very end, I was like, holy crap! And then I went to watch the movies. I'm like, yeah, that that was them because of the way they were playing. They played much more skillful than a lot of the people that I played with um, in the past few weeks. And like I said, um, I was on Max Man stream and I was talking about it. And yeah, the game is very tilted right now. Like it's either you're going to be on a team where you stomp the other team because your team is so much stronger and your players know what they're doing. And the other team will have one or two people AFK like right away. And or you're on that team that's getting stomped and you're getting the AFKs. So or it's even worse you don't have any fks but your players are so don't know what they're doing and they're just it looks like they're just they're very newbie and they're just trying stuff out <laughs> and you're playing against a team of five people who knows completely what's going on yeah you you get smashed like even even games where i'm playing gwen which was one of my mains for the longest time i literally was the third highest person in the game on the losing side like i had like almost like sixteen thousand. the highest person had like 18 the next person had like 17 and i had like 16 or it might have been 13 it was something like that all i know is i'm the highest third highest everybody else was way below us and it was like it was kind of annoying and those games usually suck because what happens is you can't focus on what you're doing because you have to keep running all around the whole map trying to put out as many fires as you can so it becomes it becomes your handicap you can't really focus and then once the opposing team realize oh that's their good player you get ganked every other minute like they they literally skip every other character and just hunt you down the whole game it's just like that's not fun because <laughs> they're like yeah that's that's the only yeah take out take out gwen Gwen's the only problem. Gwen's the one that's the problem. And I'm just like, this sucks. And that's what kind of happened. When I was playing that game um, with D'Enzio too, what started happening is I started killing so many people all over the the field. I think I had the highest kill count, second highest kill count in the game. The whole Their whole team would just focus me. They would ignore every other character. Maybe Miho at other times, but it was me and Miho we're getting focused. Our, our Ringo started coming online near the very end of the game too. So he became a problem, but he was really good at evading and not getting caught out and getting killed. So he survived a lot. Yeah, it was me, Ringo, and um, 
and Miho, we were like the, we were the danger. Our, our captain, Flicker, eh. Like, there are times where I really could have used the ultimate. It would have saved my life. And he would do the ultimate, like, after I was dead. I was like, yeah, what's the point of that? <laughs> and it would do them at weird times. Like, I'm like, like, I, 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 I. I, I didn't sit down trying to watch the whole map because I'm like, yo, I'm just going to focus on farming. You're just like, yo, why the hell did he just do that? Like, I can't use this in any way. I like the farm is more important right now. And I need to get this 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 weapon buff off this treant because I need that. <laughs> so I I have a ultimate that has me invisible and I'm not going to be able to use it because the weapon buff is way more important. So, yeah, it's kind of rough. Yeah, I hope to be having conversations like this about CB also. <laughs> and like I said, I'm, I'm really excited about stuff like war modes. Um, there's this thing called Alterac Valley um, that the war modes are kind of based off of. Um, Cloakin talked about it and Ciderhelm talked about it like early when the first release of the alpha footage of, of Catalyst Black was shown. And I went and looked up that thing. Um, if they get anywhere near that, my God, war modes are going to be really, really awesome. And I'm thinking those things might run for an hour or so, like an hour, because they, they, there's no way those things are going to be fast. And Alterac Valley, it was just like, it's amazing to have that many players um, doing specific things. And the funny thing, too, I watched a bunch of videos of how Alterac Valley failed what made Alterac Valley finally become a thing that like nobody really wanted to play anymore. And what was interesting was it's it's sort of like um, the Azure Plateau map where there is one choke point. If you're coming from the right side of the map that your characters spawn and your bots keep running up to and then you're able to just get hundreds of kills by just what do you call it? Sunder camping or mortar camping that area. So Hellstrom camping that area. And then you, you're getting pentakill, 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 pentakill after one after the other. So yeah, that that area right there, like imagine you're playing a, a game where one side, the Horde versus the Alliance, the Horde is consistently has all of these barriers against them where they can't, they have no advantages and the alliance has advantage upon advantage upon advantage so the 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 game's completely tilted to one side and it got to the point where people on the horde side would just stop playing the map because it's like what kind of fun is this where all you're doing is you're being served up to the other side to be killed the alliance people thought oh this is the best map ever <laughs> and whenever horde maps were created where the the map survey the horde the alliance people would like lose their mind they're like this map sucks <laughs> they want to boycott it and it made no sense it's like how can you be okay with your map being tilted that helps you have fun but you're completely mad when it's tilted the other way so i think the best thing to do is just create either balance or prevent prevent those things from happening i think that would be the best way to do it i would say if they're definitely going to start doing competitive modes in um, CB, and I don't see how it's not going to happen because um, people are going to be asking for it. And I would love to see um, folks like Max Green, um, how he how he would fare against like a bunch of other highly skilled players like himself. I would love to see uh, a competition like that. I, I would I'd watch that. I watch the hell out of that esport. So. I mean, what I would say is I would say super evil. Don't 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 go don't go all in like the old times where you're the one fitting the bills and you're setting up the tournaments. I'd say facilitate it that it can be done. <laughs> but but let the community and let outside folks handle that. You you just you just give them the tools to be able to do it. But you, you don't spend all your money trying to do that. To me, I think that probably was one of the bigger bigger things that that sunk everything there was too much as much as i love the esports some of the stuff 
was was wasn't managed the way it should have been. And like you said, you learn you as long as you learn from the mistakes, uh, that's one thing. So that's what I'm hoping in the future. But I I do not see, I cannot see a future where Catalyst Black does not have an esport scene, even in the mode that it is right now. I can see an esport being built around just that. And I would think here's even an interesting one. Imagine you had like a round robin version of the esport, right? You're playing the best of five, and what um, you flip a coin in the beginning, and what the teams do is they basically tell you. Um, they get to pick the mode that they're going to play. You're going to play in. So I'm just saying, wow, imagine that. Like, And you, you're playing all three modes. And so teams can have modes that they're better in. And if they win the match, it becomes like winner's winner, or actually instead of winner's choice, it would be every, every other mode is picked by the other team. Not just side, but modes also. And then what would be interesting about it, too, is the last one is random. So you're doing the best of five. Um, and you get each one get a choice. And if it's going to be like the last one, uh, if you're playing to the fifth game, it'd be a random choice. Like they don't get to decide at all. So that would be kind of fun. But I'm, I'm just thinking about it. I could definitely see com 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 competition already like I, I i see it already in my head like I, how you could how you could set it up based on what you have right now without a true uh setup for it in place but you could definitely do it there's so many interesting things you can you could try and all all the rule is it's just like in the game you can't drop you can't you can't drop in you can't drop out that's all you just you stay in the cool thing about that feature is it allows for you to be able to create like two teams and everybody can join in in that way and based on friends right now so you can definitely do some kind of matchmaking just to set it up all that's necessary to definitely facilitate it and make it work perfectly are private rooms inside the inside the game once those are added then it becomes um super easy to pull that off so even if a full deck outranked system is not done um you can definitely set something up once you have the ability to, to have rooms and invite people into it you can definitely create a competitive type of game and you also need spectators you're also going to need at least one or two accounts that can spectate so you can shout cast and do a, a lot of that other fun stuff but yeah i mean that's pretty much it that's all they need to be able to make this into a uh, into an esport and like i said i i don't see how i would not i'm not a big ranked fan i i don't play ranked games a lot i don't really care for ranking <laughs> hey scrappy i actually haven't watched your video yet i wanted to stream Ooh, three minutes away from the giveaway yippee uh so i wanted to stream first but i'm gonna be watching your video later but yeah, you and uh, you and Echo are holding it down. And if you guys get a chance, um, a buddy of mine um, that I just started following on YouTube, to Ace the Chase, just got a streamer key. That kid's a he's a really he's a really good guy, and he's does really good streams. Now, if you get a chance, when once you'll see once he starts getting his stuff out, he'll be posting it in. You're definitely gonna want to check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I think I like this. <laughs> I'm not going to... I'm just going to add a little bit of a, some color on her wings. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really good. So I'm just going to try to finish off her wings here. But I think I'm, I'm done with her. I, 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 like, I like where I'm at here. So like I said, the, this painting method... Ooh, cool beans. I'll definitely be watching if I'm not playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, I think we're good. <laughs> I'll be posting this later too. Um, all that's now left is it's knock. Knock is coming, and what you can see is this is the rough stuff on top of it, 
which still looks nice. Um, but yeah, that's it. Oh, definitely. If I get in or if I don't get in, like I said in the beginning of this stream, it's it's a blessing to be not in at the same time. <laughs> so because because the thing is, I have so much work I have to do with art that it's not such a bad thing. And I also have a my my god uh, my godson, uh, my grand nephew that I actually watch a lot. So either I'm in or I'm not. So I'm gonna one more minute. We'll find out. <laughs> But yeah, she came out nice. So knock is the next thing I'm going to be adding into here. And yeah, she should be good too. And then I'm going to do the effects in the sky. And I'm going to finish this today. I actually want to finish this today. I don't want I don't want to let it go by without this game. Woohoo. Pretty, pretty. All right. I'm going to be ending the stream here, guys, because the giveaway is going to happen. And I'm going to see if any buddies and friends got in. And go cheer on the folks in the chat who are still they have a new term for themselves the keyless <laughs> it's hysterical but yeah i'll see y'all but thanks for watching guys i appreciate those of you who stopped by and got into the stream as i always say keep your eyes your ears your hearts and your mind and open and until next time i'll see you on the next stream.